All right, everybody. I'm excited to talk to you today about slopes and intercepts. Slopes and intercepts in regards to linear relationships. So when you've got a linear relationship, the slope of the line is a ratio, and it's the ratio of vertical change to horizontal change. We knew this. Or it's rise over run, or it's the up-down change over the left-right change, or we even had it as the change in y over the change in x, which we had a fancy formula for, but we didn't really care that much about those things. Except, wait a second, we saw that formula before, but we never really, we never really talked about what that m is there for. Well, that letter m is used to represent the slope of a line. Why? Who knows? Why would you pick the letter m to represent slope? I haven't the slightest idea. Maybe whoever invented the letter M for slope just didn't speak English or something. But whatever the reason is, the letter M is used to represent the slope of a line, and so you might as well just memorize it. Okay, so what else do we know about slope? The slope of a line is really the same thing as a rate of change, and it's the same thing as a unit rate, and it's the same thing as the constant of proportionality in a linear relationship as well. So, you could say that m is the slope, which is also the rate for a problem, which is also the k, the constant of proportionality. Whoa. Okay. Now I want to talk to you about intercepts, specifically something called a y-intercept. A y-intercept is just a fancy name for the place where a line intersects or crosses the y-axis. So, if you have this blue line, the y-intercept of this line is 1. The reason is because the place where it crosses the y-axis is right here, and so that crosses the y-axis at 1. For some reason, we use the letter b to represent the line's y-intercept, so for this particular problem, b equals 1. You might want to write down that a y-intercept is the b value of a line, and the b value, or the y-intercept, is where it crosses the y-axis. Here's a few more examples. For this upper left graph, the y-intercept happens to be 3, or we could say b equals 3. For this lower left one, the y-intercept is negative 1, or we could say b equals negative 1. For this one up here, the y-intercept is 0 because it crosses through the 0 on the y-axis. And then, for this one over here, there is no y-intercept because it's never going to cross the y-axis. Alright, if you need to pause this slide and really look carefully at those graphs and try to find the 3 and the negative 1 and the 0, you might want to do that just to make sure you understand how to find a y-intercept. Now what I want to talk to you about is a biddle. This is Biddle. He's got three Got Real cards, and he's going to earn one more additional Got Real card per trimester for the rest of the school year. Let's make a graph, a Biddle graph. All right, he's got three Got Real cards, and then after a one trimester, he's going to have a fourth, and then after another trimester, he's going to have a fifth, and he could keep on going up and up and up. Hopefully you see that this is a linear relationship, like all the other linear relationships that we have been talking about. What I want you to now see is, where is the y-intercept of this linear relationship? Oh, it's at 3. Because the y-intercept of a line, it's like your starting point in linear relationship. Biddle started with 3, got real cards, and then he's getting additional ones after that. So, the fancy word for your starting point in math is called an initial value. The initial value of this linear relationship is 3. Then every relationship has to start somewhere, right? So this linear relationship is starting with an initial value of 3. And that initial value of 3 is just like the b value or the y-intercept of this linear relationship. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. Crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Okay. What about the slope of this linear relationship. The slope of this line, it goes up one over one, up one over one. The slope is one, because he's earning one additional card per trimester. That's the rate, and it's the slope. The 
M equals 1 and the B equals 3. So we could take any linear relationship and we can find an M value and a B value by finding the slope, which is the rate, and by finding the y-intercept, which is the initial value. Now it's your turn. Check out this line and tell me what are the slope and the y-intercept. And then check out this line and tell me what are its slope and y-intercept. And then finally, Johnny has $117 in the bank. He deposits four additional dollars every week. For this linear relationship, what would the slope be and what would the y-intercept be? What would the m be and what would the b be? All right, that's it. Slopes and intercepts. See you tomorrow.